Happy Halloween everyone. Welcome to my first live recording. Where today I'll be telling a personal story. Which happened to me and some friends maybe four months ago. This is a true story. And none of this has been dramatised for the purpose of this episode. So let's begin. Four months or so ago, my friends and I were exploring uh, the woods. Uh, we had we had walked pretty far. This was maybe five miles from the town. We knew of a house that had been abandoned. This house was owned by a very rich landowner who passed away and his property was forgotten about. So we decided that when we approached the house out of sheer luck that we would go in and explore. So we searched around for a while to find an entrance. We managed to find a window that had been broken. We climbed inside and noticed that the walls and the ceiling had been scorched with fire. So right from the start we knew that this wasn't a safe place to be in. But we continued to proceed anyway, as teenagers would do. We explored the rooms. First we explored the ground floor, which was half refurbished. There were a few new desks and there were some... I don't know how you would explain it. There were office equipment and all the stuff seemed fairly new. Apart from the fact that the place had been in a fire and a lot of the, the furniture and the the building had become structurally unstable. The, all of the doors were burned completely and we managed to surpass the locks by crawling through the holes in the doors. The whole thing seemed very off right from the beginning. The place where the house was situated had no wildlife. No wind couldn't hear the trees. The only thing you could hear was the river flowing beside it. Now we decided to go upstairs and explore. This place was very, very structurally unstable, which made it a challenge as some of the stairs had come loose and had fallen through into the darkness below. Nevertheless, we made it upstairs, which had been badly damaged by fire. This meant that we couldn't access a lot of the rooms. However, we could see in some of the places there wasn't much that had been left by the fire. Some old furniture and some more office equipment The house itself seemed very intimidating, but from the inside we realised that it was just a boring old house that was almost empty. We headed back down the stairs for what we thought would be our exit, until my friend let him remain unnamed for this, this story. He leaned against the door, which just fell open. Behind the door, there was a really old, maybe, Victorian era spiral staircase. The, up the upwards direction was blocked by damage and debris from the fire. However, the downstairs section, which was far below the house, was accessible. So as stupid teenagers do, we decided to explore. 
the first sort of area that we had come across when we walked down the stairs was pitch black and it had sort of an industrial theme it was laid out like there was an industrial purpose for this area of the house there were a lot of pipes and beer wires and storage closets which were all still filled with supplies this was odd because the house had been left destroyed by fire yet all of this stuff was in immaculate condition we decided that we would travel to the end of each section and make our way back and continue downwards the floor was wet and the ceiling was damp and was crumbling around us yet we still continued on we walked along a corridor there were pentagrams spray painted all over the walls people had obviously been here before us we got to the end of the corridor and walked through a really heavy door uh, so heavy that I had to hold it open for my friends and I stayed there so that we could guarantee that we would leave when we opened the door we were met with a huge pentagram on the floor the walls were decaying and damp and the room was an octagon shape we looked in the middle of the room and there was a small table and on the table were a various selection of dead animals such as crows, pigeons, rats and mice various other things we quickly exited that room thinking nothing much of it you know some dumb teenagers like us had probably been in there and decided that it would be a prank to play if they spray painted a pentagram on the floor we decided to go further down we checked the staircase once more as we descended and found out that we couldn't go any further down it as the staircase had been blocked by debris so we explored the second section which was one floor down and this place was more homely there were the walls were brighter for one and there was less spray paint on the floor sorry the walls and the place was a lot, lot nicer. There was furniture and there was also a lot of homely items like, you know, like end tables and chairs. Some kitchen equipment we had found in a closet. We checked in the only, one of only two rooms that could be opened. The first room seemed, at first glance, like a recording studio, which was odd, but we decided to investigate. The room was almost octagonal, once again, and we saw on either side were two recording booth-like rooms. Only one was able to be opened. As we looked through the door, we saw a small bed and a seat. This was odd, because it seemed more like a prison cell than a recording booth. This left me unsettled. Uh, I, I really wasn't sure about what we were getting ourselves into down here. We exited that room quickly, tried not to think about it. The floor here was really, really wet, and there was clumps of damp newspaper all around, and pieces of ceiling, and the floor was very red and shiny, almost off-putting, and the smell here was horrible. It was like 
rust and sulfuric acid. We kept walking and we reached the end of the corridor. The last room we were able to open seemed normal at first glance. We didn't have our flashlights on because it was light enough that we could that we could see. We went through into the last room, which was filled only by filing cabinets and a single desk. My friend rested his hand on the filing cabinet, and as you would do, tried to open it. And when he opened the filing cabinet, he realised that there was something wrong. He told me to turn on my flashlight. And when I did, we noticed that his hand was covered in blood. And we shone our flashlights around and realised that there was blood on the walls, blood inside the filing cabinet, blood on the desk, blood all over the floor. It was such a horrible sight. Instantly, we picked up and ran as fast as we could back out of there. It wasn't until we got to the top of the spiral staircase we noticed that our footprints were red. We had been walking in blood or something of that nature for such a long time and didn't even realise. We quickly hopped back out of that window and off into the woods. This experience is still very unsettling for me to think about. And this is the f one of the only times I've ever shared this story with you. With anyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my recount of this experience. Have a happy Halloween. Stay safe.